Rorick described the stone as a type of moldavite, the meteoric stone of green or emerald color. This would seem to fit with the description given by von Eschenbach in the 12th century. On his website, dedicated to the stone's history, Freemason Gavin Wentz came to this conclusion about just what Nicholas Rorick envisioned as Lapis Exilis, the stone they call the Grail. Is it really possible that Rorick, Wallace, and even FDR believed the Great Seal was a representation of the Holy Grail? And if so, then, as the treasure of the world, would this explain why the U.S. dollar has been used from the time of FDR onward to send financial aid to nearly all the countries of the Earth? for the establishment of a global society. During his 2008 presidential campaign, Barack Obama was criticized for wanting to spread the wealth. But in reality, the redistribution of wealth, a socialist tenet, is a practice that the United States has engaged in at a global level for more than half a century, beginning in the aftermath of World War II. We want peace and prosperity for the world as a whole. The United States now is conducting a new kind of foreign aid program. Aid not for destroyed industrial nations, but for developing countries with limited knowledge of modern technology. Many are just emerging from colonial status. American aid seeks to lay the foundations for industrial and agricultural growth. It is motivated by the humanitarian ideals of the American people and cold. But now that the economy of the American people has taken a turn, and it seems that the dollar is declining fast, how could this fit in to the plan of the secret societies? Consider that when the shock waves of the American stock market shook the world, France and China called for a global currency and a new world order. Which brings us to the other half of the dollar bill's design, the American eagle that some believe represents the mythical phoenix, a bird that is said to destroy itself by fire. But according to Wolfram von Eschenbach, the power of the phoenix lies in the stone of destiny. In Parsifal, he writes, by virtue of this stone, the phoenix is burned to ashes in which she is reborn. Thus does the phoenix molt her feathers, after which she shines dazzling and bright, and as lovely as before. If these ideas are truly embraced by secret societies, could this suggest the intentional destruction of the American dollar, which will then force our financial networks into a global economy, resulting in a new Atlantean empire that extends to all the earth. As a symbol, the stone unites the occult traditions of both Eastern and Western mysticism. One thing is certain, those who practice the occult believe this artifact is the key to achieving the great work of all secret societies. Mark Amaru Pinkham is the co-director of a group called the International Order of Gnostic Templars. In his article titled, Nicholas Rorick and the Chintamani Stone, a Holy Grail from Sirius, he writes that data regarding the Chintamani Stone maintains that it was brought to earth by Syrian missionaries to eventually help precipitate a one world civilization. He says there is some indication that one part of the stone has been the sacred stone of the Kaaba, which has united millions of Muslims around the globe. Pinkham goes on to write that it is known that a portion of the Chintamani stone was given to the League of Nations, whose stated goals were the creation of a one-world civilization. 
The association of the stone as a symbol of unity is an important part of how it is said to have come to America. It has to do with the secret history of America and why that stone arrived here, who brought it. Oddly enough, this mysterious artifact may provide the missing link to understanding how America has gone from being a Christian nation to a country beset with pagan statues, pagan monuments, and occult icons. For years, Buff Perry was financed by a leading member of the Philosophical Research Society to hunt down this stone of destiny. I learned about this stone it going into Rorick's hands through the director of the Rosicrucian Order, the, the curator of the Rosicrucian Museum in San Jose, California. The whole concept of the stone as the Holy Grail represents the so-called perfecting of mankind. This is the theme of Rosicrucianism and Freemasonry. As Manley Hall writes, to the mystic, the stone is divine power, an ancient symbol of the perfected and regenerated man whose divine nature shines forth. After years of research, Buff Perry now believes the stone was brought to America by secret societies from Scotland in the years preceding the American Revolution. For them, the stone was to empower the foundation of a new republic. Why is it called the foundation stone for America? The foundation stone for America because it was brought here by the Jacobites who had been arrested at Preston in 1715 in their attempt to overthrow uh, the kings. The kings in question are the line of English kings who succeeded King James II, who was deposed from his throne in 1688 and succeeded by William of Orange. But the supporters of James rebelled against the deposing of their favorite monarch. They were called Jacobites, a name derived from Jacobus, the Latin version of James. In short, the Jacobites were mostly Scottish Highlanders who were determined to restore James and the House of Stuart to the English throne. But the reason King James II was deposed presents a powerful clue as to why America has been steadily transformed into a cornucopia of pagan and occult philosophies. King James had proclaimed that Jews and Presbyterians and Quakers and Catholics and even Ottomans should be embraced by the Church of England. That's why he was deposed. So the, the subsequent formation of this Jacobite revolutionary uh, social order was in, in, in re reaction to his deposition and in support of his embrace of Jews. Presbyterians, Quakers, Catholics, and Ottoman Muslims. Since the Protestant English rejected James' ecumenical ideas and also feared that the hand of Rome was somehow involved, the Scottish Jacobites engaged in a series of rebellions against the new line of English kings. But their rebellions were ultimately crushed and as a result, many of the Jacobite fugitives fled across the waters of the Atlantic to America. Uh, in 1715, uh, there was a, a rebellion in a place called Preston, northern England. Many uh, of the Jacobites uh, were arrested and deported or exiled to America. Standish family, Anson family, notable families in American history, pre-revolutionary history. Families that then uh, went on to become part of the, the, the War of Independence, the American Revolution. Notable uh, Masons and Freemasons. These notable Freemasons were the survivors of the Jacobite resistance in Scotland.
a land with a long history of secret societies whose influence is both mysterious and extensive.